I can't cure everything up, so I'll be back. Oh, it's okay. Thank you, ma'am. Oh. And uh, crunch time, everyone. A merry, a merry crunchmas. Merry crunchmas, if you will. Uh, I got a haircut, finally. I've needed one so badly. And um, I did it. I mean, I didn't do it. <laughs> but I had it done. Thank you, Mom. She did a great job. Um, actually, it's, it's, I think it's just like a hair shorter than it normally is, and I actually really like it. I'm like, oh yeah, this is good. This is what hair should look like, I think. This is what <laughs> the top of my head is supposed to resemble. And it's great. It's really great. So, hi everyone. You like that, Brandon? Just, just a hair shorter. Hi, welcome to uh, welcome to Tuesday. Um, we've had a, a pretty eventful past few days, and uh, th things have things have been good. Things have been getting done. Things have been busy, and uh, you know it's probably one of those things that you even even you guys can tell because there's been just so much stuff releasing and. and and coming out. <laughs> Why were they eventful, Steven? Thank you, Thomas. Uh, there's just, there's just been a lot of work. There's been a lot of stuff happening. We've um, vlogs are now pushed up through uh, mid October, and there's. I'm very happy with the pace. Uh, it's it's been it's been a little, just a little difficult juggling everything, but the, I, it hasn't been any moments in particular where I felt like, oh god, oh god, oh god, any more than I normally do. So, I've been happy. I've been really happy. <laughs> Chess says, good job. Here. Here. So, um, I've already got, I've already, I'm already working, like, on the, uh, I don't have all the vlogs, like, that will release today done. But I'm going to get those done. And then I'm going to be recording Mario today. And I'm really looking forward to playing the uh, uh, new Zelda levels that are in it. Which is the weirdest thing I've ever said. But I'm looking forward to playing the Zelda levels in the game where you create your own Mario levels. <laughs> is Peggy drunk? She did fall down a little bit. Let me fix that. That's better. He's a bit, bit of an issue. James says, would you reco uh, consider recording Mario, uh, Morning Mario Live, like, first 20? Um, yes. And I have a, a vague plan for that. It's an early plan. But, uh... I'll just leave it at that. I have, I have an idea for something I'd like to do with that. And Mal will be, um... Mal will be up here shortly. She she actually took care of a lot of the stuff this morning because I was I got the stream set up and then at that point where I normally would have went downstairs and prepared my own stuff, I was like, I've used the bathroom. So she did everything. Thank you, Mal. How can I assist? Thank you. Will you put that there? I can't grab. Can't oh, grab. there we go. Yes, thank you. I don't know if anyone else is that way. If someone is holding a mug and hands you the mug, I can't grab the round part because it's too hot. <laughs> so I it's have not to, that hot. I have to ask them to sit it down. You just have to work in a kitchen for a long time and lose all this feeling in your fingertips. That sounds not good. <laughs> that does not sound like a healthy... <laughs> thing but okay anyway um oh, I, oh wait no i did bring a spoon i was smart now Ma now am i i'm correct in saying that, that the malbakes video is new since breakfast stream right today's tuesday yeah it, it wasn't out mm -hmm. it well is. then well then then i'm gonna i'm gonna mention it like two or three times i'm gonna let you folks know that malbakes is a thing <laughs> Mal made the pie video. Yeah. And you did a lot. I couldn't have done it without you. I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have existed without you. 
And also, you should all feel responsible because in some <laughs> in some way, it wouldn't have existed without you either. So, uh, you know, I just want everyone to learn something from this, and that is peer pressure, especially from a large group of people, works. <laughs> if you want something done, <laughs> gather a large group of friends and all of you shout until something happens. And, uh... <laughs> Who knows? Who know? The sky's the limit, really. Um, but yeah, it was. It, honestly, I'm really proud of it. Um, I have rewatched it. I mean, I'll, like to edit it, sure. But like, even just in my spare time, I've like rewatched it or parts of it, and I'm like, this is this is good. I think we did pretty good. <laughs> yes, Brandon. It only took me five minutes. It took me five minutes, and that was it. How long is the video? Seven minutes. It took me five minutes. It's fine. See, if you keep... See, now... This is the same thing. This is mm -hmm. bean peer pressure. You know what? You can have the beans. You can have the beans super early today. And I'll have you know, the beans are updated. Beans are updated. I'm sorry about last Thursday, because last Thursday I was like, I'm gonna have them updated for Thursday, and I was like, nope. But now they're updated. Fresh beans, brand new beans. So if you pledge to uh, Patreon in uh, November, your beans are in here now, as opposed to the October beans. And you might be saying, where's December beans? Those happen in January. That's just how Patreon does it. <laughs> so I follow, I follow what they call it. Sapphire Becca with the facts. Bean pressure equals coffee. You almost hit me in the face. What? No, I knew you were there. You were like, yeah, I like to I like to live on the edge. You're fine. It's fine. Thomas says coffee is soup. Sir, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. Uh, let's uh, let's 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 let's. Read some quick alerts here before we uh, dive into our uh, our weekend. Subs from Zelda Master Seven Hundred Two, B Squared Music, Skull Kid Four Four Two, Arik the Goffer, Dudamuz, Corey of High Rule, The Impossible Gordon, Arhums, Just Add Dragons, and Achibo. Those are between the scenes. And then also this morning we have a, a nine month resub from Austin Mazal who says uh, Gazelle with a M. Oh. Gazelle. So, Gazelle, Mazelle. Man, it's so funny now that you mention that because I knew a Mazelle. I think it was spelled slightly different. So, Austin Mazelle. I'm gonna do my best to remember that. <laughs> Nine months of, of just mispronouncing, but we got there. Gazelle with an M. Austin Mazelle. Nine months, can't believe it. And now I have a Twitch baby. Hope you guys are doing well. I can't. Uh, I can't wait for more content from you guys. I hope you guys have a good Christmas and New Year. Well, thank you, Austin. So far, things have been good. Honestly, like looking back on 2019, and we'll probably reflect more fully on a breakfast stream, like when we get a little closer to the end of the year. But uh, it was it was a good year, and also I feel like we did. I know it doesn't always seem like it to the audience, probably, but um, I think that we did a better job this year of self-care, of mental health, than we ever have. Would you agree? Yeah. We really, like, I know that sometimes from the outside looking in, it's like, they just work all the time. And like, that's not particularly untrue, but we've made great strides and changes to try and make things better for us and easier for us and, and believe it or not, work a little less. Especially because um, when I think back to s some particular certain years, I'm like, oh my god, yeah. how did we live? Yeah. Oh, there were there were there were some um, there were some years in the past that were I think what would be defined in today's culture as big yikes. We're trying to avoid avoid big yikes in the future. Um, <laughs> It was terrible visiting you. Thanks, Thomas! <laughs> Thanks! 
Eight months at tier two for Kikyo539 uh, says, Hey, Stephen Amal, can't make the stream today since my work schedule changed enough to miss it, but I wanted to pop in and say hi. Well, thank you, Kikyo. And uh, hello in Vodland. <laughs> Chaz says, Reasonable yikes from 2019 Ford. That's honestly, that's the a, kind of a sad way of putting it, but still, I agree. We are going for reasonable yikes. You know, yeah. that most people looking in will less still... Less and less yikes every year. Honestly, I'm hoping that by the end of 2020, we may not even be a yikes. Maybe. We'll just be like a... a, a yee. You ready to sing the Itsy Bitsy Spider? You never know what you're going to hear. 15 months from Skylot1963. Thank you, Skylot. Uh, 250 bits from uh, Locke Cole. Thank you, Locke. 300 bits from Paint Tripper who says, uh, Morning, grandparents. Finals are here, and that means a lot of studying to do. For everyone else who are taking finals, I wish them the best of luck. Uh, good luck to you, to everyone. I actually saw um, Thomas in here earlier asking about... He, I think he's been pretty proactive about asking about finals, and I think he's, it's because he's been in that environment, not just as a student but as a member of staff, making sure that everyone is taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen him say something that really resonates with me, and I want to make sure that people understand. You have to sleep. You have to rest. Like, cramming, like right up until the end and not sleeping, you're going to do worse. It would be better to study a, a reasonable amount get, a, get a, a good amount of healthy sleep and then look at it a little bit more in the morning or something. Like, you will function better. Thomas says, you've known about that exam all semester. <laughs> I won't guilt you. Thomas might. I won't guilt you. I'll just say, make sure you're sleeping. Just make sure you're sleeping because it's, uh, it's, you gotta. You gotta. It's true. Uh, 14 months from Missing No Leader. Thank you, Missing No. 10 months from uh, K Carbon. Phew, I was scared I lost my subscription streak for some reason there for a minute. You're, you're still good, and you're still at 10 months. Thank you, Carl. You want some of this? Mallory, do you think for one second I want your devil juice? <laughs> I'll try it. You know what I'm going to do? Spit it back out. Well, I'm not going to spit it back out, but I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to enjoy it. That's not even the sweet stuff. I know. Like, I try to always force myself every few months to try things that I've... It's grapefruit. To try things that I've, I previously didn't like because eventually sometimes I do start to like it. And I'm like, oh man. I I enjoy the sour taste. It's real sour. And it's it's not like I don't like sour things. Yeah. I love sour things. Then think this of... This is different. Think of that like a... Like a warhead. It's sour. It's not sour. It's sour. I wonder, is is grapefruit one of those ones that like, you know how like cilantro, some people are like, I can't eat cilantro because it tastes like soap. Mm -hmm. Is grapefruit the taste that like some people have different? Because I don't get why you like this. I don't know, I always have. It's As a disgusting. Kid, I didn't really like cereal. So like I would get half a grapefruit and I know some people like put sugar on it. I didn't. <laughs> it's just, I don't taste... <laughs> Thomas, why are you the way you are? I don't taste this, like, sour. It's tart, I guess, but it's not, like, an enjoyable sour. It's, like, there's there's an initial flavor that's okay, and it's, a, like, a citrusy flavor. Mm -hmm. Immediately, it's, like, boom, and it becomes this other <laughs> vehement, awful... It's, it's hard to explain. A good dessert, though? taking grapefruit and splitting it in half like across the equator and then you get like the perfect beautiful sections and you put some sugar on it and you brulee it like a creme brulee well oh god spark shark says haircut time oh well i got a haircut yes i got a haircut you've seen it before but i got a haircut did it once and it was a little long so i had to come and write this song now it's a little shorter 
I'm gonna become a porter, go out to sea and tell the world about everybody and my girl and say, have you seen my hair? And do you dare to touch it? It's so soft because I washed it three times. Does a porter go travel the world or are they the ones that put you on the boat? <laughs> so I guess the porter doesn't actually travel the world. I don't know, anyway. I'm gonna become a porter. Again, sometimes the emphasis is on the rhymes and not the sense. Start with the rhyme, then force it very heavily to make sense later. Attempted, attempted. 5,000 bits from Shark Strike 13, haircut time. It's true, if anyone came in late, I don't have to actually tell you with my mouth, you probably can see, I, I, did, I did get a haircut, in fact. Um, and I've needed one. The last one I got was just on the vlog. It was like October 13th or something. So yeah. it's been like two months. You needed one. That's how much my hair grows in two months. It's like... Mm. It I, always I, does I, that. Yeah. It never goes down like mine does. Yeah. Yeah. It would be a very different world that we would live in if, that would, if, if, it, would, if it would grow down instead. Uh, we got 15 months for Mike Capella. 15, wow. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for being here. Uh, six months from Amaranth, who says, Happy Crontroversary, grandparents. Happy Crontroversary. It's a very hard word to say. Crontroversary. Crontroversary. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're trying to say controversial, but you have, like, cereal <laughs> in your mouth. Like, that's a very controversial statement. Very strange. 300 bits from Silver JD. Good morning. Excited to leave for Gatlinburg, Tennessee in 10 days with my family. Also, thanks to the vlogs, I've been wanting to visit Myrtle Beach. Asked my family the past two years, even told them they have some stuff from Gatlinburg there, like the Paula Deen restaurant and the pirate show that used to be uh, Dixie Stampede. Made a promise to myself, if I can't get them to go in 2020, I will fly there and visit myself for a few days in 2021. It's true. Actually, um, there's a lot of similarities between... Gatlinburg and here. Gatlinburg. It's very similar. There's a holy, there's a holy trinity of tourist cities. Gatlinburg, Myrtle Beach, and... Branson. Branson. They're all very similar. Yes. We have we have the, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost of tourist cities. What about like the Dells? No. Orlando? No. Okay. No. Th because those are different. Like Orlando is like... You, you don't... You don't <laughs> compete with Orlando. See what Will said. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do more for Myrtle Beach travel than the city does. <laughs> Will, you're not wrong. No. Uh, <laughs> it's true, uh, but but those places are very similar, and, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's a lot of um, st attractions that are shared. I'm not saying that these are the three best places to visit for tourism. No, there are better places. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> but still doing better than the city. <laughs> There's better places to visit. <laughs> come to Myrtle Beach or don't. We're not number one. <laughs> Do you like free beaches? Well, we've got that going for us. <laughs> Just don't stay near the sky wheel. <laughs> There's a lot of stabbings. We're sorry about that. Myrtle Beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could I could market for them. <laughs> sure. Anyway, they're putting um, a theater downtown. Are they? Uh huh. In the super block. Anyway, there's a lot of similarities between those three cities specifically. Um, like Orlando has got, um, well, Orlando is Orlando. It's its own world in a way. And Vegas, you know, Vegas is its own world. These three cities share a lot because there's so many companies that built things in these in these cities specifically. So. I have a question for Thomas and Will. Is it just me, or do they really like to name things around here and then call it by that to confuse tourists on purpose? Like, the Batgate. Only people who've lived here know it's the Batgate. And the same with the Superblock. Like... Well, there's also a lot of other confusing locational things because people that are visiting mm -hmm. don't understand that Myrtle Beach is different from North Myrtle Beach 
is, that too. is the same thing as the Grand Strand. Mm -hmm. Because people are like, well, what is the Grand Strand? They're like, well, you're on the Grand Strand. So Grand Strand is Myrtle Beach. It's like the it's county, like, though. It's like, well, it's, a, but it's, it's Myrtle the Beach. But it's the ocean side of the county. It's like, well, it's Myrtle Beach, but it's also like six other beaches. Mm -hmm. And they'd be like, okay. Well, I got to get up here. I was like, oh, that's North Myrtle Beach. Oh, so that's Northern Myrtle Beach? No. <laughs> no, Northern Myrtle Beach is different than North Myrtle Beach. Those are separate cities. They have their own whatever people. How's your toast? It's a little more done than you normally have it, because oh, that good. was an accident. Mm -mm. Anyway. And D. Priest says, Grand Strand spans Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach. Well, yes. But then also, like, multiple other beaches. The Grand Strand is just a colloquial term to... The state line to Georgetown. On the beach. Yeah. Yeah, Will says Grand Strand is uh, North Myrtle Beach to Georgetown. I'd, I'd say Cherry Grove. Yeah, I'd say Cherry Grove's in there, too. I'd say Cherry Grove, basically where where, where South Carolina starts. Yeah. Sorry, North Carolina. You don't get to be grand. Get sunset. <laughs> Not you, sunset. Get out. That was all very... <laughs> we were talking to four people. <laughs> Like the two people that are very familiar and like two people that have visited and everyone else were like, we'll confuse you for a few minutes. <laughs> Thomas says I loved it. Anyway, Silver JD. Um, yes, we have a lot of things. We have like a lot of things that are similar. We just have a beach too. Yeah. And honestly, no offense to Branson or Gatlinburg, but like, Morrow Beach is probably better. The, I haven't been to Branson. The one advantage, like, like if, it, Gatlinburg's advantage would be, like, they have mountains if you want to do, I guess, yeah. some hiking. And they have snow. Yeah. So, like, there's they that. They get snow, rather. But the beach is so accessible. And you just, like, like if you go hiking, you got to, like, walk. Uh -huh. And if you go to the beach, you just sit. You got to walk. You know, what? You can walk? Let me read more. Uh, we got five months sub from the YOLP. I think YO. 14 months from ComCody20. 13 months from Joshua F36. 13 months. Wow, time flies. It is true. 300 bits from Jam who says, Hope you're all doing well. I'm getting over a sudden scare that insurance sent me uh, renewal paperwork and I didn't realize it until two days before it had to be postmarked. Not fun, but got it done and hopefully correct. Super crossed fingers and breathing again. Well, I'm sorry about the uh, the insurance scare. Hopefully all that gets straightened out. Um, we just did insurance. Yeah, because it's uh, open enrollments. And we've had the same insurance for a bit. Yeah. And we changed it drastically. Yeah. Because we were looking, we just ran numbers. Because mm -hmm. insurance, a lot of insurance, well, a lot of insurance, at least in the U.S., is like, well, when you're how sick will I be next well, year? Well, when... I mean, it's that way when you have a job, too, because when I taught, there were four options. Yeah. But, like, when you're on an ACA plan, there's, like, 30 options, 40 options, depending where you live. We have about, we only have two companies on ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we were, we, we had been doing the same thing for, like, three years, I think. And this year, we, we just sat down and we're like, let's run the numbers. Let's do some math. Because a lot of it's math and figuring out, like... Let's say I have a catastrophic incident. How much will this cost me? And we discovered that we could save a lot of money. Because we were doing... We, we, we had a very low deductible, but we didn't need it this year. And I was like, you know, there's, there's no point. Yeah. There's really no point. So, because when you get to the far end of the spectrum, or if you guys the far end of the spectrum where things are catastrophic, the plans, a lot of the plans start lining up in the, the cost once everything's paid for. Mm -hmm. And I was like, baby, I don't know that we should be, we should have a, a slightly better insurance plan. So, say again, obviously your mileage will vary based on your particular needs. But for us, I was like this, I think we could save a lot of money if we just did this differently. So did you see what Will said? I did not. I can just hear him saying that, like, right there. <laughs> Insurance is just gambling on your life, and I like to bet risky. That, it's true. It's true. 
it's also it's a little depressing. Yeah. It's a little it's a little depressing to sit down and and, and literally think how sick will I be? How sick have I been? Do I expect to be in a car wreck next year? Like I don't know. So you just do your best and uh you know, you obviously you don't want to like cut too many corners on what you pay. But also you you can lit you can literally waste money. And that's what I looked at. I was like, you know, compared to 2019, it's because we never met our deductible at all, and this is a pretty average, like, health year for us, I'm like, we should probably pay less. Spiffle's wondering what that is, because they're not American. So the way oh, our man. insurance works oh, man. is you have a premium you have to pay every month. It's like a club membership. And then you have a deductible. And a deductible's like you have a bucket, and you start putting this money in for the deductible... And once you pay a certain amount, then insurance helps. Or is all of it, depending on your plan. And if it's, um, if your deductible and your out-of-pocket maximum are different, then after you meet your deductible, you still have to pay, like, a co-insurance, which is, like, some of it. And then once you reach your, reach your out-of-pocket maximum, then they They'll cover everything. everything. So... And that's, and that's not even not talk, great. and that's not even <laughs> talking about in versus out of network stuff. Yeah. When you have insurance, you have to go in network or you'll die. Yeah. If you, if you, if you have a, if you have a, and this is bizarre, but this is just the way it is. If you have an emergency, you have to, before you get help, find out if where you're going is in network. And Be sometimes the whole hospital is like, in network, but like if you have to have surgery, maybe like the anesthesiologist isn't in network, and then you get billed out of network where insurance doesn't help you at all. Because, because for example, if you don't have insurance and you go to the doctor, you're out of network, obviously, because mm -hmm. you don't have a network. Um, the cost for the same procedure can be double. Like if you were having something done that in network insurance would co would cost like ten thousand dollars. Going to the doctor without insurance could cost you $20,000 because the insurance companies make deals with the doctors to get better rates. So ha just having insurance is like super important. Boy, Will says this is definitely a conversation two grandparents <laughs> are having right now. Yeah. Yeah. So like, for example, um, there was a half a year we that we didn't have insurance yes there was half a year a few years ago that we didn't have insurance and then enrollment came mm -hmm. and you know we got insurance mm -hmm. and it was a few months later that i had my appendectomy yes and if we would not have had insurance i do believe that it would have financially ruined us because the cost that the hospital wanted for the appendectomy with no insurance was $25,000 or some insane number mm -hmm. and with insurance it brought it down to however much six like six or seven thousand something like that mm -hmm. um, so yeah and uh, then you get bills for everything like you have bills for you know the hospital stay the ER portion the surgery you know yeah you had maybe about seven bills come for just that one procedure yeah and then they tried to charge you for the CAT scan. Oh yeah, they just throw things in there and Mal calls them and is like, um... Well, you had the CAT scan. It's just, they were like... They said it wasn't an emergency. They said, uh, um, when you have a CAT scan, you have to have pre-approval, where you call them and be like, hey, I really need this, will you cover it? And they're like, yes or no. We didn't call them because it was 3 a.m. in an appendectomy emergency surgery. <sighs> And so I called, and I was like, hey, can I have this retroactively approved? Which you can do, by the way. Lindsay taught me that, because Lindsay works in insurance. And they were like, well, you know, we decided it wasn't an emergency, so you really didn't need to have the CAT scan. And I was like, but that was the same date as his emergency appendectomy. And they were like, oh, we didn't realize. It's the same day for all the other bills. Anyway, if you only take one thing out of this, because I saw, I think it was Gami who said, you know, I'm in America and our grandparents are explaining this better than has ever been explained to me before. Oh yeah, we had no to watch one, YouTube videos. I mean, like, well... And talk to Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, we had to do a lot of, like, studying to even figure out stuff. Um, <laughs> Chaz desperately trying to get us back on track. <laughs> Hold on, I'm almost done. 
Um, if you only take one thing away from this, if you're if you're in America, here's what it is: you need insurance. You have to. You like, it's just it's it is too risky. You have to have even if it's super basic insurance. You have to have some level of insurance because if you have insurance, the procedures get cheaper when you go to an in-network place. And that's the second point. Once you have insurance in America, you have to go to an in-network place. You can't just go to any doctor you want, check if it's in-network, it will save you pop, like thousands of dollars. And then the third thing is, if you live in America, don't ever get sick and never go to the doctor. Obviously I'm joking. Kind of tongue in cheek, but that's just the state of where we are. Anyway, let's go back to talking about video games. Uh, Marvel 410 resubscribes for 15 months. Thank you, Marvel. We also got Danny gifting a sub to Yankee Gal 13, putting them at four months. Thank you, Danny. 400 bits from Coffee Cats that says sharing the love with the new emotes with the goose. Yes, as a reminder, um, there is a. There's a thing, thing going, going on. on. Well, I don't know what they call it. What do they call it? Ha 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 ha, 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 ha holidays. holidays. For the month of December and a little bit into January, um, any bits or gift subs that you do give you new emotes. I cannot talk with Mary a little. Oh my god, I'm like <laughs> trying to get through it. Um, any, any, <laughs> any bits or gift subs that you do uh, give you. Um, New emotes. And they also give other people new emotes. Mm -hmm. So, that's that's neat. Eight months from uh, Justice for Ifidamus. Who boy, it's been a hot minute since I've caught one of these lives. Great to be here, though. Just finished my five semesters of college. Only one more before graduation. Congratulations. And to everyone. Especially, fo well, I guess folks will be graduating, too, right? A lot of folks graduate in June, but some will yeah, graduate some in, do in, the f in after winter. After first semester. Mm hmm Who's who is graduating college this month? Do we have anyone here who's graduating college this month? Like you will be done to done done. Because I know for most people it'll be like spring, it'll be June. I'm just curious if, if anyone is here and they're like, oh my god, I can taste it. Because that would be exciting. A few people said one well, one more. Older brother is. Mm. Brandon says it'll be May. Master Sword says, I am. Master Sword, nice. You will soon be a graduate. Anyway. Congrats. Congrats. Just because, like, I, I'm trying to put myself back in the mindset of being in school and knowing that it's almost over. Mm -hmm. And I just remember feeling like that. <sighs> Almost done. Yeah, like that extreme excitement. So um, I hope that you, I hope you feel that extreme excitement. Because I, because I, I did. Three and a bit from Jam says, uh, cooler, happier note that's not insurance. You mentioned uh, Tyler McVicker a few streams ago, and it's finally exciting, rather than depressing, to see his Valve updates because it seems like Valve has done a 180 in their willingness to engage and listen to their fans, possibly thanks to hiring Casey Atchison. Um, Soon, maybe the joke of Half-Life 3 will be finally ended with the conclusion of Nintendo Plays Minecraft. <laughs> well, maybe not, maybe not that specifically, but yes, um, I've noticed that too. It feels like, uh, they're being a lot more open. The, the, um, what's the guy's name? Yeah. Jeff, Jeff Kelly? Jeff McKelly? The guy that does the Game Awards, um, he, uh, he did a, a little, like, interview thing where he sat down and talked to Valve, and I was just, I was really, um, is it Keeley? Kaylee? Anyway, Jeff. Uh, he did a little interview where he sat down and talked to some of the, the people at, at Valve, and it was fascinating, because Valve is just radio silent all the oh, time. Oh, is that the video we watched? Yeah. Okay. Where it's, like, them in the cafeteria. Yeah. It was so cool, because I was like, we were there! We were we got to tour we got to tour Valve. That was so neat. I really I really loved that. And at the end of the tour, we were like, so Half Life Three? And he was like, and now our tour is concluded. And I was like, That's funny. That's funny. But yeah, um I'm I'm super excited. 
I've I've uh, I've kept my I've kept my excitement for Half Life Alex really down con compared to things like GTA Five and Skyrim and stuff because you can't because play I can't it right I can't. this second. Well, it's because I I don't have the equipment to play it. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like, do you want to play it? Yeah. Are you ready to build a new computer and buy a thousand dollar VR kit? And I'm like, Chess says, no. come visit. Yeah. But I want to I want to use the Valve one, whatever they call it, the Index, where you just grab. I'm gonna try not to do this on stream too much. But the 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 VR handsets that they have, they just strap to your hands, and then you just grab things. It's amazing. So like. The song is called No, so I'm getting a lot of no <laughs> getting a lot of notes. We had 1,500 bits from the Chemist 2020 who said, "My affiliate process is almost done. Just getting the final thing verified. Congratulations! I saw that on uh, I saw that on Discord. That's awesome, super awesome. Yeah, the uh, it's a very exciting thing to like go through those steps and and get that like all the little check marks on the thing. That's like it's happening. It's happening. It's happening." Oh, the camera says, it's done! Four minutes later. Incredible. That was fast. My affiliate process is almost done. Four minutes later, it's done! Well, congratulations, Chemist. And enjoy, enjoy, uh, affiliate hood? That's a word I just decided was a word. Uh, 300 bits from Satsy, who says, uh, do you have advent calendars this year? Since I can't chocolate now, I have a strange one that gives you ideas of what festive things to do for a day. Um, yes. Yes, we do. Uh, there's uh, there's actually a particular person who sends us the traditional chocolate advent calendars every year and has been doing so for... Three years? Oh, longer, Four I years? think, yeah. Yeah, Restful, shout out to Restful Silence, um, who sends these things our way. And, and Restful Silence lives in Germany? I think. I think. I think they, they, they live in Germany and they send us these like German advent calendars and the chocolate is always so delicious. Not to like rag on American chocolate, but like, I mean, we have like good American chocolate, but that's not the de facto normal thing you would get. And it just, from an outsider standpoint, it just feels like European chocolate. Like even what, like the lower forms of chocolate are like just good, if that makes any sense certainly what it feels like but uh yeah it's been um we've been we've been enjoying them and they're good and it some days we forget <laughs> and, and we it's, have two yeah and i'm like i'm not even mad because like i'm an adult and i'm definitely going to eat multiple pieces of chocolate in one day <laughs> we got 15 months from crunchy face crunchy face thank you 500 bits from spiffler says video game related question how do you feel about receiving canadian games in mail i know they work the same but is it okay that they have French covers. Um, that is totally fine. The only the only time that I'm iffy on receiving games from other regions is if they are not NTSC. Like if it's a PAL region game, um, that's I like then I can't play the game. Um, that's the only that's the only time. But Canadian games are all NTSC, and that's that's totally fine. So, it just, and if you ever have a question about that, all you have to do is go to Google and type in the, the system and type in, like, regions. So if you want to learn about a particular system, regions or NTSC versus PAL, and it'll show you the regions of the world and just make sure that whatever you're sending matches with North America and it'll be fine. And it says on the back, right? By, like, the UPF, UPC? Maybe? Maybe. I don't know. I don't have any PAL games to compare offhand. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, that's the, that's the only that's the only downside is that... And there's some systems that are... Um, is Wii U one of them? The Donkey Kong... Uh, the Tropical Freeze one we have is, a, I think, a Canadian one. But, this um, is. Is it? Well, it has it in French and Spanish. Nouveau Monde. Uh, I think a lot of just our games have Spanish on them now. Because of Canada? Because of Mexico? I meant French. Oh, did you said Spanish. Well, I, I was reading French. Nouveau Monde. But you said Spanish. It was both. 
Oh, well, yeah, I, I don't know. I, anyway, some some of them are clearly Canadian. Chef personage. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Thank you for that. What? It's nothing. <laughs> Seven months from uh, Desson Lee. Seven months. It's been a while since I cut the stream live, and I needed the smiles and laughs your stream always gives me. Hope you guys are having a great start to the holidays. Also, I may have missed, is the smell still an issue? I was in there yesterday. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... They know. We even mentioned it to them... Last week. Was it last week? I don't know, man. I, it just... It's, it's really frustrating to have to bug someone to do a thing. And I'm, I'm just like, please deal with this. So yeah, we still have the smell. Neither of us, I, right? You don't feel like this either, that the house is like gonna burn down now? I don't know. But you don't know? I know you were worried about that for a long time, but anyway. Happy Yoshi says, I am old. Someone explain pal. There are different, there are different broadcast standards, and the the quick version is that different parts of the world developed differently and utilized. This is this is a really rudimentary version of this story, but they utilized different frame rates. So the refresh rates of monitors and televisions are different in different parts of the world. So, for example, um, our normal broadcast. Um, like standard is 60 so 60 frames in a second but in other parts of the world it's 50 so it's actually less like our cinema standard is 24 in other parts of the world the cinema standard is 25 so there's these little tiny differences and when you're talking about video games especially older video games it literally determined how the systems ran because the um the American systems literally ran at like a higher clock speed to make the systems run at the correct frame rate. Which means that in the instance of some games, they literally run faster. So if you compare like a like a video game, like a, a, a Genesis game, right? That runs in the States versus runs in another country, the game will sometimes literally run more, like more quickly. Nowadays, that's not the case. Nowadays, mm -hmm. that's not a, a thing. Um, Everything runs at the same speed, it's just the refresh rates that are different. But uh, they can utilize those, uh, those things to region lock certain games to make sure that certain games aren't being played outside of regions because of like licensing issues, etc. So, yeah, that's, that's like the really quick version. So that's why they can release a game in Europe and that game will be a, it'll be a PAL game, and it won't work for NTSC, which would be North America. So if you buy a game in Europe and you bring it back to North America, you generally have to do some sort of finagling to get it to work on a system here. Although some games are complete, or some systems are completely region free. I think like the PS3 is, or something? So, yeah, just a fun little, fact for everyone. Our doodle says, Mega Man on Genesis wasn't in America, so a lot of people emulate the PAL version and find it slow, and that's why. Because it's literally running... I don't know what to call that. At 50 hertz, instead of 60, which is what Americans would be familiar with. You got 11 months uh, resub from Vegetable Store Bay. 11? 11? 500 bits from Jam. Who's speaking of French? Here's a French lesson for today. Can you read that? I saw the video that was posted for that, so. Le yaourt, yogurt, le crème. Nice try. Squirrel racy. Happy. So it's the French word hyphen the English word and then it's another French word hyphen the English word. Oh, I see. I understand. Le yaourt, which is yogurt. Le cerveau, <laughs> which is squirrel. That's like one of the hardest French words. Well, I nailed it. 
No. Gurus. No. Happy. La Kukuribachi. Which I don't know what that is. Cucurbit? I don't know what that is. La La Furor? Fur. La Grenui? Oh, that was close. I mean, closer Kay. than the rest of them. La Grenui? Grand. Grenui? Grenui. Frog. Mifi! Oh. Me, me, fui, oh, me, fui. Kind of a dessert. Did I, how good did I do? Someone who speaks French, grade me on one to ten. <laughs> I can handle it. I can handle the true numbers. Is it a two? Forty percent. Zero. <laughs> what, on a scale from one to ten, zero. Negative five. Yeah. See, some people uh, in like in high school they get some level of French, and you didn't I didn't. Have French. Not even close. I had I had multiple years of Spanish, and I can for the most part I can pronounce Spanish words. I may not understand what I'm reading, but I I can generally like kind of read them, usually. Danny gives a sub to Elena PT, giving Elena a plus. Thank you, Danny. And Squid gives a sub to Bad French, <laughs> putting Bad French at two months. <laughs> That's surprising. This is not the first time that Bad French has been gifted a sub on this channel, and I can't imagine why I've always done so good with my French. Ryan says, yep, Steven speaks French like someone who took Spanish. <laughs> That's the greatest insult. I love that. You speak French like someone who learns Spanish. Like, si, senor. I found a comedian who is... Thank you, Crunchy. <laughs> born in England, but grew up in France from a very young age. Mm -hmm. So like he can speak very British English with an accent, but when he speaks French, he's very fluent and sounds very French. And like he has a, yes, Paul Taylor. And it was, I watched some of his stuff and it was hilarious. Mm -hmm. And he was like, like he'll do his shows and like switch back and forth between English and French really like quickly in the middle of jokes. And um, like he was doing one about when they do the kissing on the cheeks and he's like, like, how many do you do back and forth? How many? And, and they're like, oh, it depends. And he was making fun of them for their answer being, it depends for everything. It, it was really funny. France, France has a very interesting culture. Mm -hmm. Like. Mine does that too. Does yours do that? That was the UPS. Yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. I assume that means it's working, <laughs> not it's dying. Good, keep <laughs> clicking. So I know you're functional. Yeah, like, if, like, obviously every country's got, like, quirks. They've got little things that make their culture unique. But France is, is interesting. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also heavily skewed, like, my perception of it. Because I grew up watching want... Looney Tunes. Just in general, like watching cartoons as a, as a child, especially in the 90s, where like there's a little less effort probably given to accurately represent other cultures, and it was more just like stereotypes. So now I'm like, oh, I learned all about France from the, not the raccoon, what is he? Skunk. It's like, what is he? What is that thing? He's like a little black and white raccoon. <laughs> That's not a real animal, but... <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I, every, everything you learned in Looney Tunes is, you know, probably not quite correct. <laughs> probably not not as not as accurate as you may have thought as a kid. Um, but also, kids these days aren't growing up with Looney Tunes. They're probably growing up with cartoons that more accurately represent cultures, which can be just as entertaining and, and fun as Pepe Le Pew. Anyway. He's a black and white raccoon. I just call him like I see him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Animaniacs were a thousand percent correct in everything. They probably did a better job. They at least taught us the states and capitals. Did you learn that one? Yeah, and the countries. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. 
Danny gives a sub to NSO. I, I always like saying NSO. Putting NSO at three months. <laughs> Nintendo Switch Online. Thank you, Danny. This is nice. This is festive. <laughs> is it better than Mary had a little Yes. Lamb? There ain't nothing festive about But What holiday would Mary have brought her lamb to school? Easter? It followed her to school. Yeah, but if it was a holiday song. It's not. It's just a kid's song. I know. Just saying, what holiday would you do that for? This would be a springtime thing. <laughs> oh, sure. Take Mary's side. <laughs> that would have been... That's a really piss poor <laughs> thing to do. Cold pass over if Mary was Jewish. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. Um, hmm. I'm just thinking about the teacher's perspective. Like, the, I mean, the teacher would have been pissed. As she had rightfully was. You can't just bring... You can't just bring a, a lamb to school. It was against the rules. Specifically, Mary, do not bring your lamb to school. Number seven. I'm just saying, I think the song downplays the magnitude of the situation that occurred that day. You know what I mean? <laughs> Jam, rule one, no lambs. That is a really... <laughs> also, having that specific <laughs> rule written out means that it's happened before. <laughs> no no school is like, all right, and, you know, lunch is going to be at noon. Um, and also, don't bring any lambs. And you just gloss over that. That's happened before. That doesn't get on the list. It's like, oh, I'm sorry, can we go back? Uh, rule, rule seven, there's no la that's real specific. Oh, yeah, last year we had a whole incident about that. So we've just put it right on the list. No lambs. So Mary, Mary saw that and was thinking... <laughs> Mary's probably a repeat offender. Mary's the one that did it the first time. Mary comes in and she's like, she's like, this is my lamb, this is my lamb. And everyone's like, Mary, you've got to stop bringing the lamb. Nope, I'm doing it. I'm really glad we dissected this song. <laughs> Mary, this is strike two. <laughs> That's the thing. Way too, way too lenient on this. You don't bring animals to school. Especially because when this song was written, animals were probably like spreading diseases to the children. Did they know about soap when Mary Had a Little Lamb was written? I don't know. You say, how old is it? Is it an old song? Yeah, but like they've had lie. I don't know. They didn't, they didn't know. They didn't know when exactly. When do you think soap was invented? Mid 1800s. <laughs> That's like a guess. And for a long time, we were putting leeches on us. Not us. Like not like you and me. Not like me and you. <laughs> you mean up like until, up until 2012, <laughs> we've been leeching ourselves to get rid of the diseases. Mike says Mary is gilly. <laughs> <laughs> Mary. <laughs> yeah. Mary. <laughs> what? Did you bring a lamb to school? Maybe. <laughs> also, for everyone who this is their first breakfast stream, welcome to whatever this is. This happens sometimes. <laughs> when there's no insurance, leeches. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a lot of stories that don't make any sense. Google says soap was invented in 2800 BC. Rainy Rose says 1830. I mean, like. 1830 was uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb. Oh. That's I was like, was see? Saying. Look! There it is! Yeah, it's they've not had that soap. Well, longer. listen, it's not that soap didn't exist, it's that we didn't understand. That you needed to wash your hands after. Yeah, yeah. like the the whole or before food preparation. Yeah, all the all the thing about like being clean and like making sure that we don't spread germs and stuff. That's not that new, or not that old. Yeah, that that's like the last two hundred years. That's what I was saying. Like eighteen fifties is like when we were like, oh wait, maybe I shouldn't prepare this man a ham sandwich after performing heart surgery. Whoops, you know. Uh -huh. 
Sephiroth says, I mean, some cultures knew about being clean, yes. And that's why some people were not affected by the plague. Did I say it with a Wisconsin accent? <laughs> Tell them again what you said. <laughs> plague. <laughs> How is it pronounced then, Steven? It's plague. With a long A. <laughs> not a short A. I don't understand- I really don't get the Wisconsin turning long A's into short A's thing. <laughs> but like, it's a Wisconsin thing. Lindsay does it too. Yeah. So I'm just like, eh. It's fine. <laughs> I tell you what, oh boy, did that plague get him. Actually, Poland was one of the countries that didn't have a lot of that because they had a high Jewish population and they had very strict sanitation about the preparation of stuff. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, it took, I mean, you know, humanity is, I mean, we hope, always progressing towards bettering ourselves. There's a few times it feels like we're, you know, sliding back a little bit. But for the most part, you know, advances in science and medicine and things like that. So that's good. And sometimes the advances are just simply, we should maybe wash our hands. Should maybe wash our hands. It's a thing that we should do. Joel has got a point. This is the same Stephen who says giraffe and garage. It's true, pot kettle black, but yeah, Mal and I have made it work for almost ten years. We just, or more than ten years, just we just point out each other's <laughs> inabilities to speak. It makes the love stronger, I think. 100 bits from Danny. Thank you, Danny. And 300 bits from Gold Mage. He says, <laughs> Plague, giraffe, wolf, wolves, pronunciations is fun. Thank you, Gold Mage. I, see, if I take my time, I can get through some of those words. But if I was just reading it, I'd be like, wolf. Wolf. Wolf, wolves. Draft. Garage. Garage doesn't seem that weird to me. Garage actually seems cut that. Like I under I understand other people are going to pronounce the extra a in there. They're going to say garage, but I don't. I, I think I think garage is actually a pretty normal way of saying that. You can have draft though. Nobody says draft. That's not a thing that people say. But but garage, I think so. A doodle says serp. That's pretty common. I think that's pretty common down here, though. I think a lot of you say it one syllable. Is Will and Thomas still here? I don't know. Thomas is not going to back me up on this. No. Thomas would not back me up. But it's... it's. I, th I think that that's that's also kind of common, too. One syllable syrup. It might be... Well, my parents say that. So it might be like a Maryland thing. It might be that region instead of a southern thing. It's interesting growing up in a... You know, a, a household where you are, you are Southern, your parents, are, well, South Carolina and your parents are from Maryland, and they have different ways of saying words than everyone else. And they've lived there, you know, for a long time, so they've picked things up, but, yeah. like, they still are coming at it from a perspective of, you know, folks from, you know, Maryland, West Virginia area, so it's it's not the same. The oi sound? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, the, we we have to we have to borrow the shrimp mm -hmm. in the water. Yeah, and that actually can get stronger the further up the East Coast you go, because up in Maine, I think they they also say like water. Maybe it stops before it gets to Maine. Maybe it's somewhere else. I don't know. Isn't it fun that there's so many nice little variations of words? I love it. It's great. Uh, 300 bits from Princess Pika 94. Uh, to be frank, before, uh, mi microscopy. How do you say that word? Microscopy? I think so. Micros uh, people know what I'm talking about. The study of microscopes. Uh, telling people invisible things on their hands and making them sick would have seemed pretty crazy. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Um, and honestly, I, I've, I've thought about that, like the idea of, if you had a time machine and you could go back and warn people, would they believe you? I don't know. 
you'd have to you'd have to go back and, and you'd have to be able to foretell events. You couldn't just warn them. You'd have to be like, okay, who's currently alive? Let me tell you how and where and when they're gonna die. And then after you got, I don't know your history in case you get sucked back into the, the past. I know. I'd probably there'd be some things I'd be okay with, and then other things I'd be like, oh, that's whoops, got that wrong. You'd have to get like a few of those right, and then maybe people would believe you. Or they would burn you because they'd be like, you're a witch. Depends where you end up. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> Might not matter as much as you think it does. Yeah. I mean, if you end up in like Salem and <laughs> during the Salem witch trials compared to like, I don't know. I mean, medieval times. Let, yeah, the Salem witch trials would not be a good place to arrive in your time machine. Especially if people are, like, sitting there watching you get out of it. You'd be like, oh, this is not gonna end well. You'd have to spin that story really well, really quick. But you could do it. You could you just gotta be fast. You gotta think fast on your feet. Just send the crew from, uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway in the time machine. They can talk their way through it. It'll be fine. Ryan Stiles in the time machine. <laughs> Wait. That that's that's the the breakfast stream fan art we've been needing for years. Ryan Styles in the time machine with just a breakfast stream logo in the corner. And everyone's like, "How is this connected?" Be like, "Oh, well, you should have seen the Tuesday morning breakfast stream. They they discussed insurance for an abnormally long amount of time, talking about mispronouncing words, and then we got onto time machines for a while." Welcome to breakfast stream. Hmm. Anyway. It's ten. It is ten. Already. Um, to wrap up for today, <laughs> it's been a it's been a very interesting interesting stream. Um, to wrap up for today, there will be more vlogs. <laughs> Don't forget the Mary had a little <laughs> lamb analysis. Uh, there will be more vlogs, so stay tuned for that because we're uh, you know trying to. <laughs> Sorry. Keep going. We're trying to uh, you know keep that happening um if you haven't seen mouse pie video it's seven minutes it's worth your seven minutes and it was also um it took a while to make <laughs> so check that out and then um also today is tuesday which means the extra life vods start coming out today is it already yeah wow. yeah and um the uh the first one will be out today we have episode zero and then also the first one coming out today so uh chibi robo for the first time, the first time this year we play Chibi Robo because we actually start from where we left off um, previously. So those will be coming out. And then I think that's it. I think that's it. Other things happening today if you're interested in watching other people's content. Uh, PlayStation State of Play actually was going on at the same time as Breakfast Stream. So uh, if you watched this and not that, you can catch that. And um, also... Nintendo is doing a Nintendo Direct later all about indies. Is that today? That's today. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, I pro I, I might, I'll probably catch it. I'm not going to do a reaction video because almost assuredly we're not going to get many, like, unique indies. I mean, that goes Night Market. Like, there's probably going to be a lot of, like, things that are ports and please, things please, like please, that. Please, so please. I probably won't be doing a, a reaction for that, but... If there have been, you know, indie games that you've been interested in that you haven't had a, a way to play, because maybe you exclusively own a Switch, um, you should probably watch that today because it'll give a lot of information. And that's at 1, a, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern. So stay the plays out now. Nintendo's direct thing is at um, 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. So check that out if you want. It doesn't matter to me. It's not my show. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. We will see you on Thursday. Yes. Right. Yes. Thursday. Yes. Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern for more Breakfast Stream. <laughs>